In this tutorial we will recreate this scene. This scene is written completely in shader graph. There's absolutely no code involved. This is the shader graph tutorial and in this episode we will talk about some fundamentals if you're working with shader graph. And by the way, this scene is made by Unity and it's completely available on GitHub. We will create a new project or you can Use your existing project, but make sure that you use a lightweight render pipeline, which is out of preview right now. We will start with the most iconic thing, and this is the flag. The first thing that you should do is download this FBX file. It's in the GitHub repository. Uh, link is down below. And then we will create a material. We will set the color brown, brownish color, and then set it to the shovel. Uh, for the flag, we will create a shader. So we right click on create, shader and PBR graph. And we will use this to create a material. And this material is a flag material and it uses the newly created flag shader graph. Okay, after we've done that, we just assign it to the flag and that's all we gotta do. First thing we want to achieve is the waving um, effect and you hit space to create a node and one of the most important uh, things here is a position node for this effect and then you can just back and drop it into the position and you've done basically nothing <laughs> and you have some kind uh, of space that you can choose the world is um, the position relative to the world the view relative to the view and the object relative to the root of the object and um, this means this graph is uh, looped. For example, you have just a basic cube. This is a 3D cube. And then you have vertices here. And what the shader graph is basically doing is taking all of these vertices and process them one by one. For example, uh, you can say here is some kind of a for loop that is iterated over and over again and you uh, have access to all these values and these values for example are the position um, the normal the uv and everything that's stored in the fbx file and this uh, graph is processed for every of these nodes and um, pixels in between are just interpolated by these nodes for example if you have a green node here and a dark black node here you have a dark green here in the middle but this is no node you really need a node or a vertex for that so and then uh, the question is what is this this is uh, maybe one 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 but relative to what to the origin of the object this is um, space object or to the origin of the world which can be here then it's a different value maybe uh, if this is a uh, x direction minus x direction it's minus five zero zero for example and this is just what you set up here if you change the position relative to um, the world then it's always affected to the world and the rotation of the world but we want to be able to move the flag so we choose object here okay how do you access x y and z x y and z is going out here this is not one line this these are three lines you can split them you can just use the split node and then you split it the problem with the split node is it's always uh, directed to colors so red green blue alpha but you can read it as x y z not assigned and you can do this exactly the same with the uv value of the uh, vertice you can split this as well and say okay this is x this is y or no this is u, this is v, and the others are not assigned. So this is how you can access individual values. Okay, um, you can add things, you can multiply things, and this is what we will do right now. We will just multiply the x value of these positions with 10. And we will get rid of this. So now we have the same position, but multiplied by 10. And then we will use add node, add this with zero. So basically what you see here is it's just the same. Take a value, add zero to it, you have just the same. The color is a 
bit weird. You can get used to it or you can just ignore it. Sometimes it helps you, sometimes it doesn't. So uh, we can use the one value to put it in a sign so that you see what is happening. Black is zero, white is one. And um, if you pass it to a sign, it's always going between zero and one or minus one and one. So you can't really tell what's happening here. Um, but you can see if something moves and you can also um, retrieve values of the time. So this is some kind of a start node, like the position. These, I would call them start nodes because they just have outgoing values. And then you can um, do something like a multiply. You can multiply this by maybe 10 and add it here. So the time is always constantly increasing. You add 10 and then you see here on the sign there is some kind of a wave effect and this is only affecting one value and you have the position relative to the object on the x-axis. Move on and try to combine it to have the position again. So we can use the combine and say, okay, the position is here. So now we need the position. Uh, I would like to copy this position here, this position node. There we go. And just say X, Y, Z stays the same, but yeah, Z, I will, I will change Z right now. So uh, let's multiply the sign by the UV value. This will be again multiplied by 0 0.1 to have a, and this 0 0.1 will be added to the Z value here. Down here, we will save the asset and the flag is waving. It lo looks quite okay, but why is it waving in that way? So let's have a look at it again. So X, Y, Z stays the same. So we're always talking only about this value here. The X value, if I look top down, can't see anything. From the other side, you can't see anything either, but we can set the two side sided um, flag here. So now the flag is there and you clearly can see we only move in the Z direction. So, and then the effect starts very subtle and then goes goes its way. Okay. I think this part here is clear. We just take the Z value and add or subtract anything. You see the black is, I think it's subtracting and the one is adding something to the Z value. The strength is multiplied here. So we have some kind of a sign. And for example, if I type 10 instead of 0 0.1, we will see that the wave flag as um, waving very hard so we can so we could just add a vector one wave strength and this wave strength at the input parameter here set it default to 0 0.1 save the asset and here we see the flag in the inspector, we can override it here. So we have the explanation for our first parameter. I will leave it like that so that we really can see the effect. Then there is the second multiply with this UV thing here. I hope I can delete it. And then you see what's happening. So the wave is always the same. It's not affected by how far it's away from its origin. So let's put it back, save it. So we multiply it by the X value or the U value because the U value is very low here and very high here. So why, why do we use UV? We could also use some kind of an X value that is going higher from here to here or something like that. But the UV is very good because it always has origin. I think it's here, it's 0, 0.0. And at the end here, it has 1.1. 1 
so 0 comma 0 1 comma 1 and uh, you have really a good gradient from one edge to the other you don't have to uh, respect the scaling or something that's going on if you have higher values than one or lower values than zero so the uv is very good to to just control it and you multiply it with a sign so that you have a very subtle effect here at the uh, start and a very big effect uh, at the end so here's the sign how did we create that we just multiplied two different uh, we add two different things and the first is the time of course because it should change over the time and we want to have a good basement and the basement is the x value okay why is the x value here and not the z value because we are dealing with the z value so we do the same as always we just will maybe delete this one and say it's a constant like zero and then you see the flag is moving forward and backward but over the whole thing and it should only move here um, on the x-axis so that's why we choose x just just the same thing applies here we could also um, use the uv instead of the position there we go and then you see yeah it's also waving um, it's always a thing that we need some kind of value that is increasing over this edge now we have two open nodes and this is this 10 here uh, i will call it wave frequency and here it's the wave speed and here you see if i increase the speed the flag is faster if i increase the frequency the, f the flag is waving more or less with the higher and lower frequency 10 10 is a good value in the example there are other values that uh, really created a strange effect now that's everything we do to the position now we want to have holes in the flag therefore we move this whole thing up there we go and let, let's talk about something like a noise a gradient noise uh, we need a UV input. We will use tiling and offset for that and just plug in the UV. And then we will uh, strengthen the noise by just adding a power of 0 0.5. And what you will notice is uh, those um, pink spots here. And, and we can really get rid of this by just clamping the noise value between 0 and 1. And then these spots are gone and this is fixed again so this is a little bit nicer next up we will get the uv value and we have to split it again so that we can access the u value for example and then we will just multiply the power value the uv value or the u value exactly and plug it to the alpha clip method let me just get the values right so here we set the tiling to 1, 2, 1, 0, and then we get the white tiling. So, But we can't see anything, no holes. And this is because uh, the clip threshold is not met yet. We will add a node here. So add node, add 0 0.5, so that we can really go over the threshold, that the holes will appear. And after we save, we see the holes here. Okay, what did we do? Just a short explanation. We have some open nodes here, here and there, there, and so on. We will just substitute one of these by saying this is a, a threshold. And now we can see what it's doing here. We had a value of zero initially, and then we increase it and the threshold just is met by adding more and more values. For example, add a one here or a 0 0.5 and this is the correct value to have this effect. And the same trick is applied here again. We take the U value because it's increasing here and therefore it's perfect to just have these effects on the end. And we multiply it by the noise and the noise is just a noise clamped by zero and one and then 
empower it a little bit. So we will just um, call this power a vector one, replace it and see what is happening. And you see as I move up and down the power, uh, you see there is a clearer end. So you really empower the noise so that the noise is not really visible there and you can maybe um, set the length of this effect. In the GitHub repository you see that there is a texture assigned to it. It seems like a texture. You can assign a texture to it. It works pretty well. But they um, have some kind of a Unity logo and you can't find a image of the Unity logo because um, if we have a look at the texture input it's a subgraph and the subgraph is made of some kind of crazy mass so it seems like crazy mass to me because they will um, take the tiling and offset and the UVs subtract multiply it rotate it and then they um, just subtract negate subtract and add things again until they get this arrow and this arrow is repeated three times just with another rotation and then combined by a maximum or two maximums and then uh, as with the step value it's just uh, turned from black and white to white and black and then they had this unity logo so this is completely made up in shader graph the interesting thing is i always thought this is a cube but basically the logo is just made of three arrows it's not working quite fine anymore i think it's because of the version because you can't really change the position of the logo uh, if you use the older version of unity you just can do it but it's interesting to see um but that's it that's how you can create a flag with just the shader graph subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials